What could topple the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford? Looking at the enormous aircraft carrier, one can't help but wonder how does this huge ship not topple over? This is especially true when you look at the ship from the front. An arrow hull is showing out of the water, rapidly expanding and rising up. It's like a pyramid placed upside down. And if you look at the newest American aircraft carrier, Gerald R. Ford, the feeling that the ship is about to topple over only intensifies. Not only is it an overturned pyramid, but on its side hang huge platforms stacked with planes, each weighing several tons. So how does this 100,000 ton block of metal not overturn? Or maybe the sailors are playing hide and seek with death. Welcome to the Daily News AI channel. Hold on tight. We have a video full of crucial updates and surprising discoveries that you won't want to miss. From explosive developments to insider insights, this is your one-stop source for everything happening right now. What's next? Breaking news. Get the latest news on major events as they happen. Exclusive details. Discover key information that others are missing. Unexpected twists. Expect the shocking updates that could change everything. Don't go anywhere. Watch until the end to get all the important details and insights that will keep you informed and ahead of the curve. Like the video if you found it useful and engaging. Share it with your friends so they can stay informed too. And don't forget to subscribe to Daily News AI to get the latest news delivered straight to your feed. We want to hear from you. Leave a comment below and share your thoughts on today's news. What do you think of the latest developments? Your opinion matters to us. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next update. Subscribe now and never miss important news. Now, let's go. To understand this question, let us first answer an easier one. Why does a ship that weighs tens or even hundreds of thousands of tons not sink? Throw a hammer or a wrench into the water and you'll have to look for them at the bottom. But at the same time, if you let go of a rubber ball stuck in the water up to the top of its head, it will float up and sometimes fly out like a cork from a champagne bottle. What pushes it out? Archimedes' force. It's equal to the weight of water that displaces the body when it sinks. That is, if the body weighs more than the water in its volume, it'll sink completely. If not, it will stay on the surface of the water. In other words, if the density of the body is lower than the density of the water, the body will float. A steel aircraft carrier with all its airplanes, missiles, and other equipment has a density lower than the density of water. Let's do the math. The total volume of an aircraft carrier up to its top deck is approximately 1,300,000 cubic meters or 46 million cubic feet. The maximum weight of the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford, along with the crew, aircraft, and fuel, is 112 million kilograms or 247 million pounds. The average density of an aircraft carrier is equal to the ratio of its mass to its volume. We get 86 kilograms per cubic meter or 5.4 pounds per cubic foot. For reference, the density of wood, depending on the species, is 550 kilograms per cubic meter or 30 to 45 pounds per cubic foot. So, the density of an aircraft carrier is almost 10 times less than the density of wood. That's why it's so high above the water. But why doesn't it tip over? Archimedes's force which keeps the ship on the surface of the water, is applied at the center of the submerged part of the ship. This point is called the center of buoyancy. If the ship is tilted, the center of buoyancy shifts to the side of the roll along a specific curve. The intersection of the vertical axis of the ship with the vector of Archimedes' force is called the metacenter. If the ship's center of gravity lies below this metacenter, the ship is stable. If it lies above, the ship will capsize. The greater the distance between the metacenter and the center of gravity, the more stable the ship is. But if you think that knowing this theory makes building a stable ship, including an aircraft carrier, a simple task, you're mistaken. It's a complex challenge requiring many tricks from designers. Proof that theory sometimes does not coincide with practice is evident in numerous ship disasters caused by a violation of the ship's stability. Moreover, these accidents occur even in modern times when it seems like computers can calculate almost every movement of the ship. On April 16, 2014, the South Korean ferry Sewol capsized, killing more than 300 people, most of whom were schoolchildren. 
The main causes of the disaster were overloading of the vessel and improper placement of cargo. When the ferry was making a turn, it tilted, and the overloading and improper alignment led to a complete loss of stability, causing the capsize. And this is not the only case in the last 10 years. After all, the aircraft carrier is home to many airplanes and helicopters, which are constantly taking off and landing. The Gerald Ford is home to 40 to 44 FA-18 EF Super Hornet fighters, 5 to 7 EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, 3 to 4 E-2D advanced Hawkeye long-range radar detection aircraft, 2 to 3 C-2A Greyhound transport aircraft, and 6 to 8 MH-60R Seahawk multi-role helicopters. Plus, multi-ton aircraft take the elevator from the hangar to the upper deck before taking off. And this impacts the stability of the ship. Additionally, fuel for these aircraft is consumed from tanks located at the bottom of the ship, which is the most protected place. Therefore, the center of gravity of the aircraft carrier is constantly rising, reducing the ship's stability. But that's not all. When an aircraft carrier is accepted into the U.S. Navy, it must pass rigorous test trials, in particular, shock trials. This is one of the most significant tests for new aircraft carriers and other warships. Shock trials simulate conditions in which a ship may be exposed to explosions, such as underwater mines or torpedoes. The essence of the test is that during shock trials, powerful charges, usually underwater, are detonated near the ship. The purpose is to test how the ship and its systems react to strong vibrations and shocks, like those that might occur in a real combat situation and to determine whether the resulting shockwave could capsize the ship. The USS Gerald R. Ford underwent such tests in 2021. Explosive devices up to 40,000 pounds, or about 18 tons, were detonated near the ship. The test showed that the aircraft carrier could withstand such blasts without critical damage. This was the first test of its kind for an aircraft carrier in 34 years. The second type of test is maneuvering tests hard turns, and maneuvering at high speed. These tests evaluate how the ship behaves during sudden changes in course and speed and how this affects its stability, navigation systems, and crew performance. Aircraft carriers, despite their enormous size, must be able to change directions quickly to evade threats such as torpedoes or missiles. Watch the 100,000-ton USS Gerald R. Ford dashing to the left at 30 knots. That's 55 kilometers per hour or 34 miles per hour. The flight deck is tilted about 30 degrees. Can you imagine the mighty forces that can tilt 100,000 tons so much? So, how do you achieve such magnificent stability for such a huge ship? Well, there are several measures. First of all, it's the special shape of the hull, which is designed in such a way that the center of gravity of the ship is lowered as much as possible, and the center of buoyancy is raised as much as possible. Throw a hammer or a wrench into the water and you'll have to look for them at the bottom. But at the same time, if you let a rubber ball go, it will float and sometimes even fly out of the water like a cork from a champagne bottle. What pushes it out? Archimedes' force. It is equal to the weight of water displaced by the body when it sinks. That is, if the body weighs more than the water in its volume, it will sink completely. If not, it will stay on the surface of the water. In other words, if the density of the object is lower than the density of water, the object will float. A steel aircraft carrier, with all its airplanes, missiles, and other equipment, has a density lower than that of water. Let's do the math. The total volume of an aircraft carrier up to its top deck is approximately 1,300,000 cubic meters or 46 million cubic feet. The maximum weight of the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford, along with its crew, aircraft, and fuel, is 112 million kilograms, or 247 million pounds. The average density of the aircraft carrier is equal to the ratio of its mass to its volume. We get 86 kilograms per cubic meter, or 5.4 pounds per cubic foot. For reference, the density of wood, depending on the species, is 550 kilograms per cubic meter, or 30 to 45 pounds per cubic foot. So the density of an aircraft carrier is almost 10 times less than that of wood. That's why it stays so high above the water. But why doesn't it tip over? The Archimedes force that keeps the ship afloat is applied at the center of the submerged part of the ship, which is called the center of buoyancy. If the ship tilts, the center of buoyancy shifts along a specific curve to the side of the roll. 
The intersection of the vertical axis of the ship with the vector of Archimedes' force is called the metacenter. If the ship's center of gravity lies below the metacenter, the ship is stable. If it lies above, the ship will capsize. The greater the distance between the metacenter and the center of gravity, the more stable the ship. But if you think that knowing this theory makes it easy to design a stable ship including an aircraft carrier, you're mistaken. It's a complex task that requires many tricks from designers. Proof that theory does not always coincide with practice can be seen in the numerous shipwrecks caused by stability issues. Moreover, they still occur, even in our modern time, when computers can calculate almost every breath the ship takes. On April 16, 2014, the South Korean ferry MV Seawall capsized, killing more than 300 people, most of whom were schoolchildren. The main causes of the disaster were the overloading of the vessel and improper placement of cargo. At the moment the ferry was making a turn, it was tilted and the overloading and improper alignment led to a complete loss of stability, which caused the capsize. And this is not the only case in the last 10 years. After all, an aircraft carrier is home to many airplanes and helicopters, which are constantly taking off and landing. The Gerald Ford is home to 40 to 44 F-A18E-F Super Hornet fighters, 5 to 7 EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, 3 to 4 E2D Advanced Hawkeye Long Range Radar Detection Aircraft, 2 to 3 C2A Greyhound Transport Aircraft, and 6 to 8 MH60 RC Hawk Multi Roll Helicopters. Plus, these multi ton aircraft take the elevator from the hangar to the upper deck before taking off, which can also affect the stability of the ship. Furthermore, the fuel for these aircraft stored at the bottom of the ship in the most protected place is constantly being consumed. As a result, the center of gravity of the aircraft carrier is constantly rising, which reduces the ship's stability. But that's not all. When an aircraft carrier is accepted into the U.S. Navy, it must pass rigorous tests, in particular, shock trials. These trials simulate conditions in which the ship may be exposed to explosions, such as underwater mines or torpedoes. During shock trials, powerful charges, usually detonated underwater, are set off near the ship to test how the ship and its systems react to strong vibrations and shocks like those that might occur in real combat. The USS Gerald R. Ford underwent such tests in 2021, with explosive devices up to 40,000 pounds, about 18 tons, detonated near the ship. The test showed that the aircraft carrier could withstand such blasts without critical damage. This was the first test of its kind for an aircraft carrier in 34 years. The second type of test is maneuvering tests, which involve making sharp turns and complex maneuvers at high speeds. The purpose of these tests is to evaluate how the ship behaves during sudden changes in course and speed and how this affects its stability, navigation systems, and crew performance. Despite their enormous size, Aircraft carriers must be able to change direction quickly to evade threats such as torpedoes or missiles. Watching the 100,000-ton USS Gerald Ford dash to the left at 30 knots, 55 kilometers per hour or 34 miles per hour, you can imagine the mighty forces that can tilt such a massive ship so much. So how is such magnificent stability achieved for such a huge ship? There are several measures. First of all, the hull is specially shaped to lower the center of gravity of the ship as much as possible while raising the center of buoyancy. Particularly noteworthy is the ship's bow bulb, which is designed not only to reduce water resistance, but also to increase stability. Equally important is the ballast system, which regulates the distribution of weight on the ship. This system helps maintain a stable position and balance even as the weight on board changes, such as when airplanes take off or land, or when supplies and fuel are loaded. The tanks are located on the sides and in the keel area, and the system is controlled automatically or from the control room. In addition, modern aircraft carriers, including the Gerald R. Ford, are equipped with active stabilizers, which are movable blades that compensate for the side rocking of the ship, these stabilizers rotate depending on the direction and strength of the waves, reducing transverse and longitudinal rocking even in difficult sea conditions. The system works automatically, receiving commands from a computer that gets information from gyroscopes monitoring the ship's position. The stabilizer system ensures smooth takeoff and landing operations for aircraft and enhances crew comfort. However, even such high-tech systems do not guarantee absolute safety. For example, the British aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth, despite being equipped with stabilizers, 
was caught in a storm during a deployment in the North Atlantic in 2021. The ship was tossed so much that fighter jets had to be secured to prevent them from being damaged by the motion. Some crew members even suffered injuries due to the strong roll. Another critical factor in maintaining the stability of an aircraft carrier is the correct placement of cargo. As mentioned earlier, a violation of this can lead to tragic consequences. Thus, the ship's load plan must take into account many variables, such as the distribution of fuel aircraft, ammunition, and other equipment. Moreover, the placement of cargo on the aircraft deck can also affect stability. For example, placing too many aircraft on one side of the deck can cause the ship to list, especially in rough sea conditions. But the most important factor contributing to the stability of an aircraft carrier is the expertise of its crew. Modern aircraft carriers have advanced automation, but the key decisions are still made by people. The crew's ability to react quickly and make the right decisions in critical situations can save the ship from disaster. For instance, during operations in a storm, it is crucial to reduce the ship's speed and time to avoid a dangerous roll. During combat, the crew must be able to distribute the load correctly to maintain stability under high-stress conditions. And during everyday operations, they need to monitor the center of gravity and ballast systems, ensuring that all is functioning smoothly. Despite all these challenges, aircraft carriers remain one of the most advanced and powerful tools of modern military forces. Thanks to their size and technological sophistication, they can operate in the most difficult conditions, delivering air power anywhere in the world. The USS Gerald R. Ford represents the pinnacle of this technology, combining advanced systems for stability, maneuverability, and combat readiness. Its sheer size and power are impressive, but what truly makes it remarkable is the intricate balance of engineering, physics, and human expertise that allows it to float, sail, and fight, regardless of the forces of nature or the challenges of war. In conclusion, the stability of an aircraft carrier like the USS Gerald R. Ford is a complex and carefully orchestrated combination of design, technology, and crew training. From the hull shape and ballast system to advanced stabilizers and the placement of cargo, every aspect of the ship is designed to ensure it remains stable even in the most extreme conditions. While natural forces like waves, wind and storms may challenge the ship, the advanced systems on board, together with the expertise of the crew, work tirelessly to keep the carrier upright and operational. This balance between technology and human control is what allows aircraft carriers to remain the dominant force in naval warfare, able to project power across the seas and serve as floating fortresses in the most dangerous environments. As the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford continues its operations across the world's oceans, it demonstrates the incredible achievements of modern engineering, the power of physics and the skill of those who operate it. It stands as a symbol of strength and resilience, not just for the US Navy, but for the principles of freedom and security it is built to defend. This mighty vessel, like its predecessors, will likely play a pivotal role in future military operations, serving as a testament to the enduring importance of sea power in the 21st century.